the very established groups like uh, United Australia has established a Skype group. Uh, I don't know if United Canada has done one yet. I don't know if United America has done one yet uh, or any others. But if you're living in the same university that we call nation areas universities, if you're in the same um, area, that's a great way of sharing information with people now before the workbenches make that process a lot easier. So if people are having matters and you want to help, then that's a great way of helping by having some community forum. Now, the other, other way is on the University of Ucadia, and I'd be remiss, and I know Gerald would, uh, would tell me that I've been terrible <laughs> remiss, not to mention uh, university.ucadia.info. That's university.ucadia.info, where you can get a copy of this audio tonight and many, many other things. Now, on, that, on, on university.ucadia.info, I know that there are forums, and so that's another area where I would encourage you, I'd strongly encourage you to go and, if there isn't a forum in place, then certainly have a forum for your community of the particular region and share that information. Yes, good question, Profeto. Thank you. Um, okay. Let's have a look at some more questions. Okay, Ron asked a follow-up question. Uh, you missed my question above. <laughs> Uh, yes, and I've answered it now, Ron. Okay. Um, uh, Paris B asked that question of, is there any good returning all documents to the sender is no formal contract? I've kind of answered that now, Paris B. Um, no, it's playing their games, which oh, at the end of the day, because you're playing games, they're the kings of games. Um, guess 55 says Frank missed when the executive letter can be put into the court. At first he said it was within 14 days of the first summons, but down the line, if there, and you dropped off, is a lapse of time, can it be introduced into the case? Yes, absolutely. No, if, if, if it's longer than 14 days, and I just want to be clear, if, you, if the, if the matter is carrying over and there has not been the perfection of the plea, you can use the executive letter now, absolutely. It's just that once you've had a plea entered into the system, then the judge will claim the role of executor, absolutely, and, the, and that letter will have no effect. Now, we might come up with some remedies later, but even if it's been longer, it could be three months, absolutely, you can use the executor letter. We well, can use it any time you like, basically, but from 14 days onwards, uh, if, if, if there has not been an entering of a plea, then there is no executor yet appointed. I assure you there is no executor appointed for the matter, and you can certainly use that letter. Yes. Um, okay, questions. Uh, Ron says, Frank, are they rejecting because of the blood and ink fingerprints? Can we use ink signatures? No. They will, they will argue that they are rejecting the blood. They will argue that. If they're returning the documents to you, they're not rejecting them. It is their way of running away. They're not rejecting the documents. They, they don't want to follow them. They don't want to obey the law. So how do they circumvent the law? Well, they use the argument that, we, <laughs> that some of you were using earlier, which is let's put our head in the sand and pretend we weren't mailed. And that's what they're doing. I'm not saying, by the way, that if, if people ask a question, that that's how you think. I'm just saying that it's, it's one of their tricks. One of their tricks is, I didn't get it, the dog ate my homework, didn't come in the mail, so they'll return stuff back to us to say, you know, because we return it back, as if it never occurred. Well, that's complete baloney. Now, later, one of the things we're going to be doing is using our great register as a proof of service. So it doesn't matter whether they have uh, sent them back or not. The register will be a register of events. We'll simply say the event is you received it. You can send it back as many times as you like. The register says that you received it. Now, um, so the short answer is no. The blood seal is fundamental to their system. A blood seal is a Levitical seal. It is a seal 
of the most serious and significant nature. It, it is at the root of their magic. When a papal bull is issued, the whole reason they issued papal bulls on the skin of children and heretics, and now they'll deny it, and now they put them on the skin of animals, vellum, is that the skin is flesh and the flesh brings life to the document. So considering papal bulls to this day are considered the highest form of original law, that tells you what a blood seal instrument means in their system. Now they'll plead ignorance, stupidity. As I said, the dog ate my homework. They'll use every excuse under the book. But let's not play with pedants. Let's not play with people who are behaving as children. Let's raise the stakes. If they want to play dishonour games, take it to the US Attorney General. If the US Attorney General dishonours blood sealed, validly blood sealed instruments that are protected, then we'll take it to the next level. And if there is no remedy in their system, then as it is written, we will have proven this year that their entire system is without redemption and come the day of judgment. Remember at the end of the day, December 21st, the coming of the third proto-notary, the third horseman, Michael, the head of the armies of heaven and hell, comes to judge them because there is no remedy. So would I like them to honour it, Ron? Yes, I would. Will they honour it? I can't tell. Free will means I can't stop stupidity. But at the end of this year, it is the day of judgment and everything that has taken place is evidence to their dishonour. Um, okay, still waiting to see if you can get your question in um, Wild Things Magic, and I'll, I'll answer it. Um, D, Deloitte 22 says, What can I do in a claim and cross claim due to go to court in May? That's a little bit vague, Deloitte, but uh, what I'd say to you is please read the notes um, and if you can't see remedy in the notes, then use the forums. And if you can't see remedy in the forums, then as a last response, please write to me. But um, it's a little bit too vague at this point, Deloitte. I'm not. I, I think I'd suggest to you at the moment is to read, and then see what remedy you see in the knowledge. Uh, as, as I just answered. And good luck when you read. Uh, G N E Y Guy says. How would you respond to an unopened IRS letter, most likely in regards to missing my last three years of tax returns? Well, firstly, I wouldn't fear it, and I would open it. Then I would uh, look at what is it the IRS is, is trying to do. The IRS claims to have certain uh, powers, if they're going to bring a matter before you, then you can use the knowledge we're doing. There's a whole section there in terms of uh, what tax is, uh, what your position is. I would certainly have put in my perfection of my claim of right, which is my ecclesiastical deeds, into the officials. Uh, and I would follow through uh, with the IRS in, in, in simply saying that um, uh, there's no jurisdiction now. The perfection of your claim of right allows you to do one thing with a with a tax debt apart from contesting jurisdiction. And that is that if you look at the structure of the ecclesiastical deeds, particularly the um, particularly the pronouncement of restitution, have a look at those words carefully. Because what we're saying there is any outstanding sin has been paid by the blood seal. Now, under the religions of Mithra, which is at the root of all the present religions and corrupted religions that we live in, unfortunately, blood is the ultimate currency of their gods. Blood is. So when you seal something in blood and you do it consciously, then you are paying back any outstanding money. Now, 
how can I prove this to you? Well, let me, let me go back to a, a previous audio we discussed in terms of indulgences, and this is actually written into the documents. Under the Roman cult, the system that underpins every single financial element of the modern financial system that pervades the world today, there are two accounting transactions that take place for everything. There's one in heaven and there's one in the temporal realm. Now, the one in heaven works on the following principle. The Roman cult believes that there is a thing called the treasury of heaven, the treasury of one heaven. It just so happens under the covenant of one heaven that we claim that treasury. We rightly claim to that treasury and that the instruments issued are validly from that treasury. The second thing they claim is that the treasury of heaven was filled with credit through the blood of the saints, through the blood of Jesus and their sacrifice. So the Mithraic concept of blood atonement. So blood was the thing that brought ultimate credit. And this is by their own rules, by the way. This is their own rules. So does the IRS know this? No, they're probably stupid to it. But do, does someone at their level know about it? Well, they should because it's the basis of everything in their system. Now, you make it known when you perfect your claim of right that you've paid. So I'd simply say to the IRS, once you've gone through and any claim of right, I've already paid it. It's already been paid. Therefore, I'll offset anything you send to me by putting in the missing numbers on the, on the, uh, the uh, redeeming slip at the bottom and simply say, guys, it's already been paid. Go away. RE, refer to my previous documents. Now, if they still dishonour, then uh, we'll talk about it later because I know the IRS are uh, uh, approaching things at the moment like complete idiots and pretending that they don't understand any of their rules, which again is a sign of desperation. But your claim of right gives you your strongest case to offset anything they throw at you because the claim of right says we've paid the bill. The bill is paid, paid in blood. The accounts are levelled. There is no debt. Go away. Now, there's a third argument to use, and it is this, and this is the essence of the, the concept of the set-off or the offset. Either you recognise that we are competent, living, returned, and give us our beneficial entitlements, and we will take care of our accounts, or you deny by your silence our claim, and therefore have reinforced your claim that you are acting on our behalf. Now, you can't have both. You can't say, oh, we recognise that you have your own standing, but we won't play that game, we'll, we'll play over here. It's one or the other. Logic says A or B. You can't have A and B. Now, if the IRS is operating on the basis that they deny your claim of right, then ipso facto they are claiming that they are your guardian. They are claiming still to be the power of attorney and they're claiming that the Sester KV Trust will not be dissolved. Okay, fine. If you want to be the guardian, you pay every one of my bills. But you can't bring me in front of court and say that I've produced any kind of fraud because I've made it known this is my claim of right. If you're denying my claim of right, fine. You pay every one of my bills. Now, that's not playing a game. That's not some kind of, quote-unquote, because this is the kind of language they would use, some free man, sovereign, uh, you know, let's not pay taxes. Not at all. We are approaching them as adults, mature adults. Give us our beneficial entitlement and we will administer our affairs and we will render our accounts appropriately. If they, not us, if they want to behave, like recalcitrant children, then they can go and pay the bill. So hopefully that gives you some food for thought. All right? Um, all right. I see wild things. Magic is tried again. How do I stop it? I'm hoping this is the question now. How do I stop judge having last word on property settlement because the judge takes the position of father? Uh, you cannot consent. Look at the power of not consenting. 
Uh, at the end of the day, if you're